Hello, everybody, and welcome to another edition of our Community Access. Last week, we went to the Scarecrow Festival in Oxford. Then we went to Addison Oaks and Addison Township to get the scoop about the future of Addison Oaks. Then we have our Dog of the Week from the K-9 Rescue League. Then last Sunday, Terry and I crew went to the Addison to visit with the Blessing of the Bees. All today on our Community Access. <music> Welcome back. What a great day in Oxford last Saturday for the Scarecrow Festival. With the story is our reporter, Andy Curtis. Andy? So from bird deterrents to Batman villains, scarecrows have been a big part of American life, and no more so than here in Oxford, as we're having one of our annual scarecrow festivals right here in lovely downtown Oxford. So me and Russ are going to go around with our camera and talk to people. Not only do they have a chili festival going on, pie eating competition, live music, great games for the kids, costume contests, and everything else. All right, we caught up with the new DDA director, Ginny Shomish, and this is your event. This is your brainchild, right? No, well, not really. I can't take all of the credit for no, it. but You can take most of it. <laughs> well, my guess for this year, it's been really great. We've had a lot of people involved, as you can see around the park. Um, so they've really been probably the force behind it. I just keep everybody under control and making sure that everybody's set up and we're getting things done on time. Yeah. And it, it seems like you're doing an incredible job. We've This place is packed. Uh, it goes till uh, 4 o'clock, I think you were saying, and, and we haven't even scratched the surface on some of the events that are going on. Yeah, we have still a lot more coming up. We just finished the pie eating contest, yeah, and that was a that. riot. The little kids were adorable. Um, we still have the pet parade coming up, and I think everything else is really still going on. The fire truck's available for kids to come and learn some fire safety, um, chili cook-off, all of our vendors, and there's lots of food around. Um, just different inflatables, um, and then starting at 3.30, we're going to start announcing winners for all of our contests. Um, so yeah, but yeah, we're having a great time, the weather's beautiful, and I'm, we're very happy with how things are turning out. And you guys, I've noticed too, a variety of great live bands. Uh, performing right now is We Three and She, they kind of have a history with us coming in and performing in our studio. So now the sweeping success of this event, has it, has it gave you any uh, ideas on what the next big event is going to be here downtown? Um, well, we do have the next one set is going to be our tree lighting with our holiday celebration. Okay. And that takes place on Friday, December 5th. So we're still in early stages of planning that one because Scarecrow takes precedence over everything right now. Um, but we're getting very geared up for that one too and starting to make sure all those ducks are in a row to make that event very successful as well. Okay, great. So. And if someone's here and they want to be involved in the next the tree lighting event coming up, how can they get a hold of you? Um, the best way is probably email. It's dda at villageofoxford.org. Um, or they can go to the website, downtownoxford.org. And there's also um, the holiday celebration, I believe, is oxfordholidaycelebration.com. So a couple different um, changes to the ends there of those different websites. But, yeah, definitely get a hold of me, and we'll make something work out. All right, great. And uh, thanks for the time, and I think we're going to go with some chili. Great. Sounds good. I've already done it. It's fantastic. Did you have a vote? No, I didn't vote. <laughs> I know. I really should have, but I was just hungry and I ate. So they're, they really, really taste good. They did a great job. Yeah, I'm really impressed. And I think I'm going to put on a fake mustache and go around for a, you know, a second time and vote maybe twice. Totally do, totally do that. That's definitely worth it. <laughs> All right. Thanks again. Thank you. All right, we found longtime DDA supporter Sue Basardi. Sue, thanks for talking with us. You're welcome, Andy. Now, what do you think about what's going on? We've, uh, we've, we're blown away with the amount of support that everybody's been giving to this festival. The place is packed. Yes, it is, and it's great. Uh, last year, we had very poor weather, and it was really hard to be up here. Cold and rainy, but this today is perfect. And everybody's having a good time. We had a lot of vendors show up and have support, and... The train's been busy, the um, hayride has been busy, everything is busy, busy. 
and it's a perfect fall day, especially for chili, hot cider. Everything is just adding up great. It is. It is. It's just a great day for everybody to be in town, and the kids are having a ball, especially with the blow-up thing out there. I don't know what it's called, but that's a new addition this year, and it is really popular with the kids. Whatever it's called, I wish it were bigger, because I really want to get on it, but... <laughs> Well, Sue, I know uh, we got a uh, tree lighting festival coming up here. Do you know anything? We that do. The Soup and Sweet Stroll is coming up. It's a Friday night before the Christmas parade. And um, that's where all the um, merchants, the restaurants, have either a soup or... Uh, some sort of like sort of entree or something. Entree or something that they have out there. And we have uh, people like Pete Schultz will be serving and Bill Dunn and some of the council members in that. And you just buy a bracelet, and then you can go to every place that has something and um, get a sampling of it. Yeah. And this year what we want to do is we want to add on and make sure that hopefully all the merchants are going to have something out on a table in front of their business, whether it's just a plate of cookies or a bowl of um, candy canes or something like that, so that we can they can showcase their building and their business and have either brochures or uh, cards out there. So we want to make sure that we touch base with all of them and get them all involved this year, make it bigger. Yeah, that's incredible. I love what you guys have been doing with all these uh, festivals going on downtown and getting all the businesses involved. Um, is that going to be something similar to this chili cook-off that we're under the tent for right now where you can vote on maybe uh, an entree as stores kind of more or less compete against each other? or? No. No, it's strictly showcasing your restaurant, and then there's going to be the tree lighting in the park. We'll have carolers. We usually have groups of carolers uh, in each quadrant, and they'll stroll along. Um, we've had the lighted barrels last year. was the first year that we did that, and fortunately they turned out really good, so we'll do those again. And um, then we'll have uh, roasted nuts here in the park and hot coffee, hot... Um, Cocoa, probably. Cocoa, yes. Hot chocolate. Yeah. yeah. So it's all free. I, I know I'll be there, that's for sure. Yes, yes you will. It's, it's a good night, good night. People have a lot of fun doing it. And have you picked a fa have you voted for your favorite chili yet here? I did. Would you, uh, is it secret ballot or can you share with us who maybe is? Secret because we haven't, we haven't added up the stuff yet. <laughs> I've been trying to ask everybody and see who they've been voting for to get kind of an edge on who I wanted to vote for, but. Well, I'll tell you off camera. Oh, okay. <laughs> <laughs> well, thanks. Appreciate it. You always love talking to you. Thanks. Thank you, Thank you very much. It's fine. I shouldn't care anymore. I'm broken. All right, we couldn't leave without stopping by one of the vendor tents here, and we're with Mike Beard of Beard's Horseshoeing. Not only does he shoe horses, but uh, when he's done with those, he makes some incredible art with them. Is, is that pretty much right? Yeah, they're just leftover shoes that I uh, that come off the horses, and I got scrap piles laying around, so then I turn them into art. Uh, really, really cool. Actually, we were talking to some people over there at the Chili Tent, and that they recommended that we stop by. So. <laughs> well, I appreciate it. I work hard on this stuff. My girlfriend back behind us over here, she... Uh, comes up with the ideas and I just sit in the garage and work on it so, so do you do anything else um, besides the what we see kind of here I see you got uh, a few things spelled out you got pumpkins obviously signs and turn any word into you know out of horseshoes um, and then uh, like we've done ribbons and stuff like that for the pink the cancer and uh, yeah anything you can think of I can make so so if somebody's you know has an idea, they can give you a call, or they have a, a horse that needs to be shooed, they can yeah, contact I, you. I shoe horses is my main job. Um, yeah, they can call Beard's Horse Shoeing. Uh, but yeah, I'd be more than happy to come out and help anybody who needs any shoeing done. Do you know the number? It's uh, 248-390-1227. I didn't want to catch you off guard. So. <laughs> All right, well, thanks, Mike. Appreciate Thank talking. You. I appreciate it. So clearly we're having a great time down here at the Scarecrow Festival. And make sure if you didn't make it this year, you turn out next year down here in Centennial Park in Oxford. So for our Community Access, I'm Andy Curtis. Back to you, Bill. And now I just got to find my way out of here. Uh, oh, here we go. Good job, Andy. Congratulations to Sullivan's winning the chili cook-off. Next up, we went to Addison Township to get the scoop on Addison Oaks Park. With the story is Pauline Bennett. 
Hi, we're here today in Oakland County, Edison Oaks Park, and it's a beautiful, beautiful sunny fall day with Donna Folan. How are you? I'm doing well. It's a great day to be in a park, Pauline. It is, and this is a beautiful park. Donna is a senior planner for um, County Parks. What can you tell us about your position? Um, my job with Oakland County Parks as, as a planner is I'm in charge of working with um, gathering public input and doing the planning for all of the individual parks. Uh, we have a goal in the next three years of having updated 10-year master plans in all of our parks. I also work with organizational planning, so with our five-year recreation plan, and I also do a lot of work with individual facilities, uh, working with our maintenance staff to establish standards, etc. Sounds like that keeps you quite busy. Yeah, it's a job to do all the time. So that's going to bring me to the next question. So it must be time for review for Addison Oaks Park. So what do you have on, on the slate for us? Um, Addison Oaks, uh, the last time we had a, a tenure master plan for Addison Oaks was in 1992. So we're way past due for that park. And um, Addison Oaks is... Uh, um, uh, when I briefly go through the process for how we do our master planning, um, it's very strongly based on public engagement and also on working with our stakeholders, our local communities, the recreational groups that use the park, um, and also with our staff's knowledge of the park, what the life cycle of various buildings and facilities are. So last year, um, in the summertime, we collected over 400 surveys from people in the park. They're park user intercept surveys, which means we asked everybody to do a pa paper and pencil uh, survey. What do they like? What's working well? What could we do better? We collect some basic demographic information to find out where people are coming from and what their ages are and that sort of thing. And so uh, we took that, uh, took that public engagement back to the office, worked with our staff to develop a uh, vision, overall vision for the park, and then we're looking at some very general concepts for the park for the future right now. I mean, it's not detailed facility plans, that sort of thing. Conceptually, what do we want to see happen here in the next 10 years? And now we're at the stage where we want to get more public engagement, we want to start working with our communities to be looking at those concepts, and that's going to help us to get to the more detailed stage. Interesting, and that's going to bring almost two questions on that one. Um, from those surveys, the 400 that you received, can you share some of those findings, or what were the majority um, about? Um, absolutely. Very, very positive about the park. People love the natural aspect of the park. They love the cultural aspect, the historic buildings in the park. Um, all in all, people tend to like to kind of relax and hang out in the park. They like the beach. They like the picnicking. Uh, we talked to a lot of campers who love the campgrounds. What people wanted to see is they wanted to see, although almost every, the, the, highest rated thing of what people come here to do is to use the beach and what people wanted to see the most were improvements in the beach. Okay. So that kind of tells us that improving that beach area is going to be a worthwhile investment because people want to come here. Uh, people were interested in having modern restrooms in our uh, more rustic campground area and um, there were interest in more, ac more equestrian activities uh, and but all all in all just a real positive view of the park and just looking for some modernization in various ways all great ideas so do you plan on implementing some of these or are you still in the research stage um absolutely that's what we've been building our our concepts around is that public engagement and interestingly enough when uh, working with the staff here at the park the operations and maintenance staff when i went over the public engagement results with them they said yes that's what we've always, that's what people have been telling us, and that's what we understand needs to happen at the park. Um, so the overall vision for the park is focused on continuing to enhance um, the natural resources of the park and the cultural aspects. Um, the things that make this park really, really special, the things people love about it, um, 80, uh, about three quarters of the park is undeveloped and three quarters of that undeveloped area is high quality um, natural area which we are actively stewarding. Uh, we have the historic buildings on the park that we'd like to see um, have a historic um, inventory per um, you know per the state guidelines so that as we move into the future we make sure that even if we're not 
using the buildings in accordance with you know what they were designed for that we're preserving them and that we're not making any changes that can't be reversed at a later time um, and also to help one thing we're interested in, in helping people to enjoy those buildings more have more access to that area um, we would like to see more um, adventure type recreation throughout the park and one of the things that was very interesting that we found out is this park is very dispersed you, you've got the campground at one end, you've got the beach at one end, and it doesn't really have a focal point. Um, the concession building, which is where we're standing, has not actually had an active concession in it for about 10 years. And we would like to build kind of a welcome center around this area where the concession is, where the beach is, where the playground is, possibly adding some sort of children's water feature to the playground so that they have an alternative to swimming. and. Um, make this kind of a focal point that when you come into the park you know you've arrived here and from there you can make your plans to go out to other areas of the park um, to the campground to the mountain biking trails or whatever what were some of the adventure ideas well we've been looking at the possibility of uh, having this park has a fairly rugged landscape a very gently rugged landscape uh, the idea of having sort of learn to camp, learn to hike type programs here so people maybe could come to a program here and then get ready to have, you know, an adventure in the UP or whatever. It's a way to sort of learn to use various types of equipment. We'd also be interested in looking to see if there's um, uh, maybe trying out some temporary zip lines and that sort of thing. Um, most of the adventure would be more on a pro programmatic basis mm -hmm. and of course we have the mountain bike trails which are very popular and that is all uh, and then winter activities along the mountain bike trails which is all part of that you know sort of local close to home adventure type uh, format. So from in listening to all of you described it doesn't sound like there's going to be major overhaul just improvements mm -hmm. to to make it um, a little bit better a little nicer or more active. Yep the purpose of the park now it works well. Mm -hmm. yeah. It's it's a place to enjoy nature. It's got this beautiful backdrop of historic buildings. Um, it's a great place to camp. It's very popular for camping, and um, people love to come here in the summer and picnic and hang out. And we just want to just keep on enhancing those features. Uh, one very important aspect that we're looking at, um, and this is something that we are um, going to be working with, you know, Addison Township and mm -hmm. our local communities are is continuing to build the connectivity of the trail system of the park with That's major right. trails like the Pollyann Trail. Um, just, you know, it's, it's, it's not going to be a fast process, but start mapping that out. Where does that funding come from? Who's responsible for different pieces? How can we make it all fit together? And from the standpoint of this park, how can we be welcoming to those connections so that this is a destination within that network? Yes, the trails would be a magnificent boost even for Addison Oaks and Addison Township mm -hmm. both. And I do understand that you're going to be ha hosting a meeting for the plan. Mm -hmm. On October 23rd from 4 to 7 p.m. here at the concession building. Um, we're inviting everybody to come and uh, take a look at the plans. We're going to have, of all the different you know, concepts that I talked about, we're going to have different uh, stations with maps there and with staff there so that people can comment, um, add more detailed information about what they would like to see. And, um, and that's the next step in building this plan is to just to get more input and then we can start getting down to that detailed stage. Can they call you or email you if they have ideas concerning Addison Oaks Park? Um, a good place to start is going to uh, www.destinationoakland.com slash planning and that will take you directly to a link to a survey and to a map and also with my contact information but you're welcome to call me my number is 248 seven three six nine zero eight seven or you can email me at foland f-o-l-l-a-n-d-d -D, at oakgov.com hopefully everyone does give their input because this is a beautiful park and before we close is there something that you would like to add about either addison oaks parks or oakland county parks um well i think overall is we are looking more and more for uh participation as we move along and you know move into the next decade with our parks and uh you know please join us and um help us to plan for the future
Thank you, Donna. And to everyone out there, enjoy your parks. There you go. Thanks, Pauline. Next up is our Dog of the Week from the K-9 Rescue League. Okay, this is Hannah. Hannah is about four or five years old. She is probably a lab cross with something bigger, maybe a little bit of St. Bernard, maybe a bit of Rhodesian Ridgeback. We're not really quite sure. As you can see, she's super friendly and easy to handle. Um, she knows her name. She knows sit. She loves to play and she loves to go on walks. Um, I believe she's house trained, although we can't guarantee that. But she was adopted from us a while ago and spent some time with a lady who tells us she was house trained. Uh, unfortunately, that lady had to go back to work and was not able to give Hannah the attention she needs and the exercise she needs for such a big dog. And uh, she thought it was better to bring Hannah back to us so we could find her a more appropriate home. She has spent time with one of our foster parents um, who could tell anybody a lot more about her if somebody was interested and wanted to call us. We would have the foster dad explain a bit more about how she behaved with him. Hannah, are you a good girl? Yes. Um, Hannah is good with children. She's good with all people. She's just not good with all dogs. So we do not recommend her to go to a home that already has a dog in the household. She can get along with some, but she's picky. Ideal home for Hannah would be a place with lots of space to run or definitely somebody that has lots of time to give her plenty of exercise. Um, now, as you know, we do off-site events during the month. On the first and third Saturdays of the month, we are at uh, Petco down at the Great Lakes Crossing at the shopping mall close to Coles. And on the second and fourth Saturdays of the month, we are at Pet Stuff, which is harvest time in Oxford, and that would be on the southeast corner of Drainer and Lapeer Road, M24. Um, we are there, both of those places, the events take place from 11 till 3. So either of those places you can go to. We always bring a selection of dogs, large and small, different breed types, different ages um, for you to meet. And of course the kennel hours here for you to come and visit with Hannah or any of our other babies are um, listed on our website. Um, you should be able to get to our website fairly easily. It tells you a lot about the dogs, tells you all about the kennels, it gives you our open hours and days and times. Um, also, if you were interested in volunteering, everybody here is a volunteer. We'd love to have you come along up and fill out a volunteer form and we can put you to work. Uh, there's always a lot of laundry to do, cleaning, and if you're over 16, you can walk dogs with us. Under 16 must have a parent with them, but they're welcome to come along and help. If you have any other questions, we'll welcome your emails to the website, and we do try and respond as quickly as possible. Just another great dog from the K-9 Rescue League once they are located on 2120 Menomore Road, just north of Myers. Last Sunday, Terry and I went to Addison Township to visit a unique story about blessing the bees. Now, we will show a little of the blessing today, but the rest of the program will be on, we hope, next week, at the one to four o'clock Monday through Friday. Let's a little of blessing the bees. We don't have the bees, we don't have food, you know, and um, 
I've been very grateful to Mark and Bethany and their family for bringing the bees here because uh, when I was a child, I read many, many books on beekeeping and always thought that was something that I'd be able to do. And I've had some challenges in my life and not been able to do it. So when I found out that Mark wanted to have bees, I was like, yes, <laughs> we can still do bees. This is wonderful. And um, learned a, a, a lot, you know, from having the bees here. And like you said, it was amazing because bees represent regeneration. You know, things beginning over, which is sort of what was going on on this land at the time with the family and work and challenges that was going on. It was pretty symbolic of many things. When we had our first year here, we had a lot of challenges. We had some warrior wasps that were after them. And, um, you know, when I looked around at what was going on again in the world and in our lives, it was, you know, everything was going on at the same time. And they survived, you know, they had guardians like Mark and Bethany, you know, watching out for them. And all of us, I think, need to be guardians of this land, you know, our land, our environment, of each other. It takes, it symbolizes taking care of each other, you know, not just me. This is, we need each other to survive. beautiful day for this gathering for all these people willing to come and celebrate with us the abundance that you have shared with us and a day to remember the abundance in our lives the love we hold for each other and the good way in which we try to walk upon this earth please bless our bees bless our home bless our lives Hold us close to you with your sacred heart. Carry us through the trials in our lives. Help us to know that they are lessons and to see the good in them, to see the positive in them. Help us to look at each other with love and support in the community as these bees depend on each other and on us. Thank you. There you go. Watch the rest of Blessing the Bees next week on Oxford Community Television. So, for our reporters Andy Curtis, Pauling Bennett, and reporter editor Terry Styles, I am Bill Service. Next up, John Ogen with another story on my life on Oxford Community Television. 
and you have a great, great week.